It's the summer 2021, and after a global pandemic, several lockdowns, and the anti-vaxxers dying off, we are finally going to see a revival of live music. If your band is eager to get back out there, get up on stage, and rock the world, here are a few helpful tips to help your next gig go just a bit smoother. Now, this might not have crossed your mind because your band is clearly the next big thing and we've never heard such heavy genting before. But a good live show is more than just you playing to a crowd or more than likely an empty room. There's planning and preparation before there's execution. If you guys want to put on a great gig and not make complete idiots of yourselves, then it's time to put down the bog and pay attention. Or better yet, write this stuff down. That is, if you have any rolling papers left to write on. Number one, don't show up if you haven't learned your songs. Before you even think about gracing the stage with your amazing presence and your equally awesome music, make sure you actually know how to play your songs. Because if you don't, you'll end up on the internet. I walk down lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes. Trust me when I say this, you don't want to be the laughing stock for millions of people. Just look at all the band fail compilations on YouTube and ask yourselves, do you really want to end up in one of these? Put in the time, practice together, and work out the kicks. If a particular song is giving you trouble, it might just be best to leave it out of your set entirely or to find the problem element and simplify. Look, I know you think you need that exact intricate tom fill at that point in the fucking song, but if the drummer can't get it down properly, have him play a simplified version. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. If your singer's having a bad day and can't really hit the high notes, have him sing an octave lower for that part. Believe me, the world won't turn on its head if you make a couple of compromises that help you give a better performance. Your drummer and singer's egos, however, might not survive. Number two, you're not an improv group. Plan your show ahead of time. Besides practicing, you might want to make sure you've got most of your show figured out ahead of time. And that means decide what songs you're going to play, make a set list for everyone in the band, and then practice to it. Print them out if you can in big, bold, friendly letters so there's zero confusion about what song's going to be played when. Hopefully your bass player finally learned how to read. It's also good to keep in mind that your guitarist, the awe-inspiring perfectionist that he is, is going to decide to tune his guitar between songs. This is a good time to have some stage banter written because no one, and I mean no one, wants to watch you guys just stand there while the Slash wannabe tunes his fucking guitar. And please tell him to mute his guitar when he's tuning because nobody needs to hear that shit like fucking ever. Yes, believe it or not, it's really not that entertaining. In fact, it's kind of vomit inducing to listen to and you will be mocked by the very same people you came to entertain. Even if it is your guitar player doing the tuning. No, really. Number three, if you're not early, you're late. Show up in advance, preferably several hours in advance. Why? Because there's more to playing a concert than just you showing up, playing your set and getting wasted. Don't pretend to be rock stars because you're not. Nobody likes that shit anyway. The truth is you're in a small band, nobody knows who you are, and your job is to make sure the people at the venue are entertained and enjoy their night. Let me say it real slow here for the singers. The people you're playing to aren't there for you to stroke your ego on. They're there to have a good time and hopefully hear some decent music. Show up early and actually try to be the band that people want to work with and book future shows with. If you really want your band to become professional musicians, then start acting like professionals! Number four, don't fuck around when getting your shit on stage. Look, I get it, you guys are musicians, you probably have raging hard-ons for your gear, so this might be a shocking revelation. People don't really want to watch you haul your gear on stage. No, it's not entertaining in the slightest. Set up as much stuff as you can off stage and help each other carry the heavy stuff on stage. And until it's time for sound check, don't play anything! Nobody wants to hear you nervously fiddle on your guitar while your drummer is busy carrying his eight-piece kit with 17 cymbals onto the stage that can barely fit you all. 
share the workload, and be a team. It also helps if you know where and how to set up. If at least one of you has the chance, visit the venue a day before and talk to someone about where the various elements should be placed. It will show the venue owners that you mean business and that you want the night to go as smoothly as possible. That being said, please make sure to bring everything you actually need. I've been to more than a few shows where I had to make a mad dash back to the jam space and retrieve the drummer's carpet the carpet which he marked with duct tape to make his placing of the drums easier. Even if you don't think you need it, and if you have space in your car or you live close by, then bring it! And if you end up not needing it, keep it out of the venue so it doesn't clutter everything up. I know there was a huge outbreak of people stealing carpets out of cars a few years back, but somehow I think you'll survive. Number five, get sound check done and get off stage. Once you've brought all your stuff on stage, you got it set up, it's time for that bittersweet symphony we all know as Soundcheck, where no one shuts the fuck up, and the primitive instincts of musicians become very apparent. For some reason, the second nothing is being played, the guitarist will start playing some shitty soul he made up the night before, or the drummer thinks it's funny to start playing blast beats. All the while this is happening, the bass player is probably drooling over his phone and playing Angry Birds. It's enough to make a guy wonder how these people function when most of the time they're playing chicken in oncoming traffic just to pass the time. Look guys, this really isn't difficult. When you're doing sound check, the sound guy is trying to balance the volume of the PA and your stage monitor. That means you have to play when, and only when, he tells you to. I'm going to assume that you didn't even pay for your own sound guy, and that the guy who works at the venue is struggling to find the strength to not throw something at you when you decided to start waking off on your instrument. Let the guy do his job! Then, and only then, can you play a part of a song to see how well your monitors are adjusted. He'll make minor adjustments for you one by one as you tell him. So before you inevitably whine at him that you can't hear your amp, please consider the fact that you might not be the first in line for everything every single time, you fucking prima donna! Number six, share gear between bands. This is an absolute no-brainer, but it's also a good opportunity to shake some hands and build relations. Chances are there's gonna be other bands that play before and after you. So unless you want the show to be mostly people hauling drums and amps up and down on the stage, consider having a meeting with the other groups and discuss what gear can be shared between all of you. Bass players, only one of you really has to bring a cab to the show. The rest of you can bring along your amps and just plug into that. What a novel concept, right? Drummers, try to organize so the core kit elements are shared. That way, you'll only have to bring your snare, cymbals, and maybe the kick pedals. If one of the drummers has a great kit, offer to chip in together to cover the cost of replacing skins after the show. Even if he doesn't think he'll need to, it just shows good sportsmanship. Other bands appreciate it when you look out for somebody other than just yourself. On a related note, if you're playing with the Dayglow abortions, do not let those fuckers anywhere near your gear! Back in the 80s, my friend Steve, who helped me build this place, his band got to open up for the Dayglows. One of them asked if he could play through his Marshall JCM 800, an amp that Steve had worked his ass off to afford at the time. The Daglo stupid fuck got on stage, cranked everything to 10, and blew the power tubes. And when the night ended, it was like, oh, sorry about your amp, dude. Then he drove off, and Steve got stuck with a repair bill. What a dick move. Now, I did mention this incident on the show a few years back, and I got a phone call from that guitar player who offered his apologies. But it's like, dude, it took you 30 years in a public shaming for you to finally apologize for fucking over an 18-year-old kid. A kid who spent countless hours working at a gas station to afford that amp. If you're going to borrow somebody's gear, you better be able to afford a, to pay a repair bill if you fuck it up. Otherwise, break your own shit. Apology or no, my warning still stands. If you're playing with the Dayglows, don't let those dumb fucks anywhere near your gear. But if you're at least somewhat familiar with the people you'll be sharing the stage with, there's no reason to not share it. It really just comes down to trust. Number seven, don't bring barely functioning gear. Test it before the show. If your guitars have shit electronics or your cables are fucked up and crackle, if your drum skins are cracked or your mic capsules are blown, don't bring them to the fucking show! Seriously, what are you hoping for? That the gear fairy is going to magically show up and fix everything before you play? That your duct tape special won't stop functioning at the most crucial moment just before the first song? Fuck sakes, take some time before your show and test your equipment. You might want to play that show with your favorite guitar, but guess what? If that guitar's electronics are held together by spit and chewed up gumballs, it might be best to go with a different one. That is, of course, if your majesty's ego will allow it. 
Besides making sure your gear is in gigging condition, you should also make sure to bring spares. Things that can break or go missing in a pinch. Things like strings, picks, tuners, drumsticks, etc. Even tools like screwdrivers, flashlights, and soldering irons. These can all come in very handy. I have two videos that you can check out called the Guitar Player's Toolbox and How to Build a Drummer's Toolbox. These include all the little things you're going to eventually wind up needing, so check those videos out. After this one, I'll have some links at the end. Bottom line here, organizing your tools and spares will ensure that if something breaks, you have an easy fix that's right at your site. It's just really handy to have even if everything goes right for you. Maybe the other band's guitars might snap a string or need a spare pick, or their drummer forgot his drum clutch like my drummer did at once at a gig. If you're there to save their asses, believe me, you'll be a godsend to them and they will repay that debt one way or another. Unless, of course, you're playing with a band on all ships. They have a long, proud history of treating other bands like shit, so fuck those clowns. Number eight, don't get wasted before you play. I know this might seem like common sense to a lot of you who have a functioning brain, but this is a real problem with many musicians. It's very common for guys who've never played before to tense up and cave in. Stage fright can be a real kick in the nuts and doubting yourself before you even get on stage is going to add fuel to the fire. So what do genius musicians decide to do? Drink and or do drugs to take the edge off. Let's be very clear here. Alcohol and drugs are not going to help you. Alcohol is a depressant. Weed is a depressant. And cocaine, well, if you do that, you're a fucking moron. Sure, these things might help you take the edge off, but there's a big difference between taking the edge off and getting fucked up to the point that you're throwing up, yelling at people, and crying over your last breakup. If that doesn't get through to you, maybe this will. Remember, it's okay to be awful. Remember point number one? Nobody knows who you are, and they don't expect you to blow their minds either. Keep that in mind, keep yourself sober, and actually do your best to blow the audience's minds. It's better to be remembered for playing a half-decent show than being a laughing stock because you were so wasted you pissed yourself and ran off the stage. Number nine, don't be a dick if you don't get special treatment. If you were too dense to follow the rules so far, then you have no right to complain when someone calls you out for being stupid and lazy. If you are late to the show, don't expect the promoters and organize to just be cool with it. Everyone attending and working at that venue is relying on you to do your part and fulfill your commitments. If you didn't practice, don't blame your bandmates for playing wrong. If you brought shitty gear to play with, don't expect others to bail you out. If you half-ass the sound check, don't blame the sound guy for your monitor mix not being perfect. You are not better than anyone else at that venue, and you most certainly do not deserve special treatment. Look, organizing and setting up a gig isn't easy. The venue owners and promoters function under pretty tight guidelines and can be under threat of legal action if they slip up. So if you're the ones adding fuel to the fire by acting like a bunch of douches, don't expect them to be nice to you. And don't expect to play that venue again because they won't book you ever again. Number 10, don't be Marilyn Manson. Back in 2017, Marilyn Manson played the Metal Days Festival and most people who were there didn't really like his show. This pissed him off and he started insulting the audience, He'd saying things like, do you people even speak English? I'll talk slow so you can understand. And if you're tired, we'll just leave. And guess what? He did. The man took such a blow to his ego over a crowd not liking his drunken ramblings and piss poor performance that he left the stage a half hour early. Don't be that guy. Don't be a self-important douchebag. Sometimes you might not get the reaction you're expecting and that can be a major downer for you if you've been preparing for a while. The crowd might not vibe with what you're playing or maybe they're just not that into you for some reason. Remember that you're there to play and perform. It's not Sunday and you're not at church. People did not come to the show to worship you. You're not the fucking Messiah and your stage presence certainly is not godly. No matter what your hangers on might say. Look, sometimes people just don't want to mosh at your show. Sometimes they don't want to headbang even to your totally amazing and brutal five minute breakdowns. And don't even think about insulting the audience if they're not reacting the way you want them to. No matter what energy the audience is projecting, you have to deliver the goods and play your show with everything you've got. Doesn't matter if it's for a thousand people, a hundred people, or in your case, just a few dozen. If you give it your all, it won't matter how many people came because the ones that did will remember you and they'll respect you for not being a pack of whining bitches because you didn't play to a packed house. Number 11, beware the thieves. 
The sad truth is that not everyone in the world is a good person, and there's a chance that some of those people will end up at your concert. And if they see an opportunity, they might just try to steal some gear from you. Make sure you take some precautions so your gear doesn't grow legs and go missing. Get some stickers made with your band's name and put them on everything you own. Get creative. Put two stickers on each. Put one on a really obvious place and another in a place where only you'll know. That way, if some kleptomaniac douchebag tries to snatch something and peels off the obvious sticker, you've got a backup. You can even buy a little engraver and engrave your name or initials onto a part or whatever you're trying to protect. Colored tape on your cables makes for an easy identifier and makes tearing down after the gig that much easier. Number 12. Don't steal from the other bands. If you're one of the people that thinks it's okay to just swipe something that doesn't belong to you, then fuck you. Seriously, knock that shit the fuck off. Those are not your things, you did not pay for them, and just because you're a jealous little prick doesn't mean you can just take other people's shit. I get it, alright? You just played a show, you're tired and possibly wasted. You're not thinking clearly and that little hamster that spins the wheel in your brain decided to take the night off. So you convince yourself that taking other people's property is just a fine and dandy idea. Well, I've got news for you, it's not! Do yourself a favor and think twice before you do some stupid shit like that. Because when, not if, but when you get caught, you're gonna be up shit's creek. Depending on the people you stole from, you might be humiliated and shamed at best or wind up visiting an emergency room at worst. And you'll have deserved it too. I can't say this clearly enough. Don't steal other people's gear. Even if you get away with it in the short term, what are you gonna do? Play your next gig with it? Yeah, like the guy you stole from won't be looking for it, especially at the gigs of bands he just played with? Smarten the fuck up. Number 13, in case of fire, don't panic. Now on a more serious side, keep in mind that accidents can happen, and in a packed venue, things can turn chaotic pretty quickly. Back in 2003, the band Great White were playing at the station nightclub where there was a fire. Their pyrotechnics ignited the non-fire retardant soundproofing in the walls and ceiling, causing a fire to quickly spread throughout the whole stage and later on the whole venue. People panicked and ran for the exits with survival on their mind. And in the midst of that panic, several people ended up trampled and there was a log jam at the door. A hundred people died that night and over 230 were injured. Many of the survivors were left with burns, physical trauma, and PTSD. What's even worse is that for some reason that night, the club exceeded their officially licensed capacity, and it stands to reason that wasn't the case more or even all of the concert goers could have survived. If you're playing an overbooked venue and you feel like you could be putting people in danger, put your foot down and talk to the organizers about it because you don't want to be held responsible for somebody dying. It may even be better to count your losses at that point, but if you truly have to play the show, the most you can do is keep calm and tell the audiences to do the same in case the shit hits the fan. No life is worth losing in a pointless tragedy, especially not at a place where people came to enjoy themselves. Do yourselves and others a favor. Learn how many exits the venue has, where they're located, and help point them out to people in case there's an emergency. And please, for the love of everything that is good, save yourself before you save your instruments. I love it when I sit down, it just skips ahead for no good reason. Fucking hell, I really gotta get a remote for this. Need a better fucking chair. Yes, I know. <laughs> is struggling to find the strength to not throw his feces at you. Play the intro. Da-da-da-da-da.